Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego, or Oswego? Is that how it's pronounced? Oswego. E-E. Yeah. E, e. Oswego. Uh, uh, in, uh, in Oregon, which is uh, just a short stone's throw from a stone's throw uh, in Portland, Oregon. Um, is that still going on there? I haven't checked recently. Really? Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I have no idea. Really? <laughs> Okay. Portland. I mean, what, what, and what, most of Portland is nowhere near where that goes on. So. Yeah. Well, it was just like you you mentioned last time. It was just like one block or something that it was happening. Well, it's more. It's three or four blocks, but it's one area where there are a bunch of government buildings, mm -hmm. and so therefore it's a, you know, it, it it's an obvious place for demonstrations of all kinds. Right. Right. And uh, as and and rightly so, people should be able to demonstrate. Yeah. Not if Pompeo has his way. Who? A Trumpio? Pompeo. Trumpio? Is that what you're calling him now? No, Pompeo. Oh, Pompeo. Okay, I thought you said Trumpio. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that would be kind of like if uh, Pompeo, Pompeo uh, married Donald Trump. Oh, I said Trumpio. it wrong. Pompeo, right. You're yeah. right. It'd be a little, yeah. Uh, but Pompeo, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I, I think what's happening there is terrible. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, as they say, I've said this before, we're living in a banana republic without the benefit of bananas. Yeah. You know. You know, I'm, I'm worn out now, officially, that every day you wake up and, and the president has done something or is in the process of doing something that never crossed your mind that any human on earth would do. And I'm worn out. He's just worn me out. Well, I, I, I pay less and less attention because, you know, the other thing about he keeps saying, OK, we're going to do this. We're going to you know, do something outrageous to certain types of people or something. And then a few people say, no, you're not. And he says, oh, OK. And he backs down. So it's just he makes noise, but nothing ever happens. You know, it. It, 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 did you? Have, I, I think Bill Barr is more dangerous. Did you happen to see the Axios interview at all that they did sure. with him? Boy, I'm telling you, I felt so sorry for that interviewer. As somebody, Why? because I mean, he did a great job. I did. I know he did a great job against all odds. Because what happens is Trump doesn't even let you finish your question before he starts. Uh, pontificating and going with run-on sentences so he can play out the clock and get the hell out of there. I yeah. don't think that's the motivation at all, but go ahead. But, I mean, he's just, just plain rude with the interviewer. The interviewer couldn't get a whole question out, and then, hey, it's ter your turn to answer, you know? It was very rude, very terrible. I, you know, I don't think rude applies in the world we live in right now, Alex. I don't really well, think Well, rude it's is not a, uh, 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 an idea that Trump has any concept of, you know. But I also think that it's not important. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, that, that he, I think that his rudeness is a given. It's always been there. Uh, and, and given that all the stuff that's going on and all the stuff he tries to pull off and that his henchmen are actually pulling off things in their area more quietly. Um, I don't think rude applies. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, it, it is. It's always been part of who he is going back decades. Yeah. Well, follow me with where I'm going on this, okay? okay. Um, you and I have never had children. But had we had children, and those children... I have a child. Well, you do have a child, yes. <laughs> oh. Well, you, you, yeah, you found out about that. Not right? yours. Well, I have, a I have a child, I have a child too, somewhere. I don't know. Uh, he, he, I, he may not even be alive any longer for all I know. But anyway, the point I'm making is uh, that if you had a child and that child constantly was trying to get your attention, how would you handle that? Would you, would you pay You handle it the way every parent does. That's what children do. That is their job. Yeah, but I mean, here you have a child in Donald Trump who is constantly trying to get attention. Every day, I'm sure he wakes up and says, how can I get attention today? Because we've never had a president this exhausting. We've never had a president who every day is the news cycle. 
come on, they go away for a week or two. They do their job, and then something happens, and they appear in the press. But they're not there every single day, and the discussion is not Trump 24-7. But it became that. I mean, thank God there was an explosion in Beirut because for one cycle... Oh, don't, 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 don't. Please don't put it that way. Well, for one it's cycle, we weren't talking about Trump. You know, I mean, it, it's just... I mean, what would you do with a child like that? Would you pay attention to him and play into that? Or would you like say, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being a, uh, what is it, an enabler to that kind of attitude? I'm not... I, I don't know how to answer that because... There's no answer. I mean, you and I can't, we have no way to affect anything. Yeah. But isn't the press kind of been his, his enabler by every time he makes a petulant sound, they pay attention to him? Well, you know, you have to, that's a very, very hard call. What is news? It's, and, and, and in this presidency, it's harder than it's ever been. You don't know. You don't know when he comes out there and starts whining about what somebody said about him um, or didn't show up at his inauguration or something. You don't know that he's not going to segue into something that is truly important. Let me ask you a question. You worked for Barbara Walters for how many years? Uh, doing, Eleven. Doing her specials. Eleven. And, 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 and 2020. And 2020. And and you went and did a lot of pre-interviewing of people and setting no. up of the interviews and hand. No, I mean you talk to them on the phone and get parameters, but you don't, you don't give them questions ever. No, no, I didn't say that. But I said that you you, you do sometimes uh, uh, there are pre-interviews in which you talk to them and just see what they're up to and so on. But anyway, my point is, did you ever do Trump? No. Isn't that amazing? No reason to in those days. I mean, he was he was just a fairly stupid attention grabber in in New York. That's all he was. Yeah. I mean, that isn't somebody you would put on the Barbara Walters specials of 2020. Yeah, but she never she never interviewed him either. I would. I, I don't know. I think I saw I an interview with her and him at one point, but that might have been after you left. You know, because maybe he didn't become I don't important know. until then. I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, because I I wondered if you'd ever met up with him. Uh, no. I met up with him for one second once in Las Vegas. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, I'm tired. I'm exhausted of him, you know? I'm pooped. And I think the American public is too. I think he has overstayed his welcome. And now he's clutching at straws to try and get reelected. It's amazing how nice he's become to the press in his press conferences. I... Uh, I describe him as the building super who doesn't pay attention to you till October when it's getting close to December in the tips. You know? And that's exactly what he's doing now. He's the super super is trying to get his tip this year. Uh, all of a sudden, his behavior kind of has changed. He's a little nicer to the press. Uh, he doesn't go off the handle, you know. Uh, but he knows he's he's in for a bad time right now because I looked at Biden today and I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of Biden, but there's nothing particularly unlikable about him. There's everything unlikable about Trump. And so between the two, I, th I think Biden's got a good shot. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, given the stupidity... I'm, I'm not... Yeah. I'm not yeah. I, I, I just, I don't know where to go with people's prognostications on this. It, it will be what it will be when the time comes. I don't think guessing who's going to win does anybody any good. Now, let me ask you, because you have an audience that's old, older, uh, because you do a thing called Time Goes By, dot net. We should plug that, mm -hmm. oh, in which you yes. talk about <laughs> what, it, what, <laughs> what, it's lo what it's like to get old. And what it's really like to get what it's really like to get old. What it's really like to get really old. Uh, but yes, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> but my question to you is, uh, how are is this older audience reacting to all of this? Because usually an older audience is somewhat more conservative, aren't they? I mean, politically. Well, you have to understand that my audience is specialized. One of the most interesting 
things. I rarely do politics. I do it a little more often, maybe once a month or so now, because Trump is Trump and things happen. But um, universally, in 16 years, that blog, on the rare occasion I do something political and make it evident where I stand, which is usually on the left side of things, um, the Republicans, who are never regular readers, they're, ne they're never ones that I've seen their names before, who ever left a comment or anything, um, they always are nasty when they disagree. They are really nasty, enough that, I, that they attack other commenters or attack me personally. And the thing that's not allowed on my blog on any topic is you cannot attack anybody personally. You can attack ideas and explain why you disagree, but not a person. Mm -hmm. And exclusively when people, and by the way, if you do that, there's no warning. If you do that, your comment is removed and you are blocked from ever commenting again. Nobody gets a second chance. And if they are exclusively right wing or Republican, always. Really? Yeah. Excl nobody on the left side, when we're on the rare occasion we do politics, ever, ever steps over the line in the argument, if argument, discussion, whatever it is. Um, today is not a political day on, the, on what I posted, but some people disagree with what I said, and they've explained why, and it's been interesting. And so in that way, I've called the audience. Nobody who behaves the way so many right-wingers do gets a second chance. They don't get to come back. So I can't answer your question. Mm. Because would you, my audience would you, would you is pretty much would you where, just, would to you, the left side of the cent of center. Would you describe these Republicans as perhaps have been being the bullies in the schoolyard? I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I as a metaphor, I, I guess it's perfectly good as anything else about mean people. I don't know. Yeah, you don't think that the, the left wingers are capable of being that way. I don't know if they're capable of it or not, but they're universally, almost universally, I'm not talking about my blog, just around the web. On the, I don't often pay attention to the comment sections on news sites. Yeah. Sometimes I'll scroll through them a little bit. And when they disagree, and when they disagree vehemently, they're funny. They can be funny about it and still make their point. Yeah. Never met an angry right winger who had any humor about it. Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, uh, on my uh, show every night, there's a chat that goes beside the video oh, okay. where people can chat. And uh -huh. the mean chats are, now that you mention it, always the conservatives. Uh, I won't say conservatives. Conservatives are a different brand from Republican, necessarily. Uh, uh, but if, people who consider themselves right wingers are the nastiest ones. You know, are they watching your show? Well, they're watching the show. They're commenting on what's going on and so on. Uh -huh. And there are a couple that just they go in there and they they literally obl try to obliterate the chat. Well, yeah. I mean, th those aren't left or right wingers. Those are trolls. And you ban them. If you don't ban them, they're going to screw up your show forever. Well, I don't consider the chat my show. You know, uh, well, it's, it's just there a, on the screen. It's there on the side, and if people want to read it, I never look at it. I hardly ever look at it, but when I do look at it, I notice that there were people who, uh, one guy calls himself American Patriot. He's always trolling. He's been doing it for the last two years, you know, as long as I've been using YouTube. So, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I find that what you're saying is true, that uh, the, uh, the uh, right-wingers have a tendency to be nastier than the left-wingers, and that's probably why we got beat up in the schoolyard by the bully. You know? Yeah. Well, um, Why can't we have a civil discourse? Uh, no, blah, 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 you know, fake news. What I hate, I'll tell you what I hate, I'm just getting to hate it, is every time you try to argue with one of those people, and I have one of those on my show every night, uh, and I have them there. On purpose, I, you mean? A, a, a right winger, right winger. On purpose. Uh, yeah. I mean, you book that person. Yeah. Can, no, I, no, he calls. Completely pro Trump. But I don't ban him because, after all, he makes for a good conversation and he's respectful of others. 
okay? So, you know, but, I mean, uh, it, it's maddening because what happens is is that he, they just have no sense of, um, of, of being able to have a civil conversation. And, and that's Don't the problem. Don't you think that that's... You know, I've never had this. I've never talked about this. That it seems to me that I, I use the phrase right wing in terms of left and right politically. Mm -hmm. They're conservatives or liberals or progressives or whatever. I I just can't keep. I think everybody has their own definition of that. So it's not useful to label somebody mm -hmm. that way because everybody thinks of it differently. But it's just it's just interesting to have a conversation with different points of view. And so I'm always kind of puzzled by just the yelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, or, or, or if, if people are typing it, whatever, you know, the all caps version of that. But uh, it, it seems that we're always on left and right, as particularly in the Trump era, trying to convince one side, both sides, trying to convince the other side to believe something that is 180 degrees from what they do believe. And you're not going to ever get anywhere that way. You've got to find, if you're going to have a reasonable conversation that's thoughtful and something you want to consider, it would you would need to t speak in a way that engages the other person to think a little bit differently. Not, you're not going to turn anybody 180 degrees in one conversation. Yeah. And I think that goes wrong when you've got one side that is always yelling, or if it's comments on a news story or on my blog, all caps screaming in it. Um, you just alienate the other person's not going to pay any attention to what you're speaking. Well, the point that I was going to make, and I, I kind of lost my train of thought because <laughs> because at my age I'm losing my train of thought more and more I'm tired all the time I lose my train of thought but anyway get back to my train of thought if I can remember it what I hate uh, about this guy is that anytime you say something that's factual and there is not an argument against the facts he calls it you mean like the sun comes up every morning yeah he calls it fake news that's the yeah. excuse. Yeah, well, he got that from Trump. But yeah, that's the excuse for anything. And that's what Trump did in this Axios interview. Anytime there was a fact thrown at him, well, that's fake news. Well, you can't just say it's fake news. You have to specify why it's fake news and well, point that's it why out. Nobody ever gets anywhere, Alex, because there's nowhere to go when someone says something like that. There's no next thing to say. Because you can say all day long or... Jonathan Swan could have said through the whole interview, well, that's not true, and here's what really was said or happened. He's just going to continue to say fake news. So it's just a conversation. Even, even, if, Swan tried to put, put, even if Swan tried to put it that way, Trump wouldn't have let him get the whole question or the whole statement Well, out. you know, you keep getting hung up in politeness and forget that. I mean, that doesn't exist. Well, it's not even politeness. It's having a discussion, waiting for somebody to ask. You know, you Trump can, doesn't ever have a discussion. How do they you, yeah. Like I just oh, interrupted I you. He interrupts, I mean. But how do you answer a question you haven't even heard yet? You know, and that's what he does. But Alex, why? I don't see why you get hung up on something that's been going on for as long as you've ever heard of Trump. Well, I wish I had never heard of Trump, but that's another point altogether, you know. I mean, anybody who lived in New York looked upon him as this uh, this uh, idiot, you know, this 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 blowhard, you know. I mean, uh, uh, you remember the you know the and the Central Park group, the, those guys uh, that he said, oh, let's throw him in jail and everything like. That. I mean, this guy's been going on with this crap for years. We knew what we were getting. And that's why New York didn't vote for him. We knew what we were getting. The rest of the country, the, all they knew about Donald Trump was he was this guy on television every week. You know, and saying, you're fired. Oh, oh, I forgot he had that TV show. Well, that's how the rest of the country got to know him. You know, and they figured, oh, well, he seems to be a big businessman and he's a billionaire. You know, I mean, the reason I don't think he wants anybody to see his taxes is to see how poor he is. 
you know. So I mean, you know, it, it's just it's oh boy, but what have we, you know, this is the end. Uh, this is coming towards the end of my life. You're going through a situation where you don't know how much time you have left. Did, did we have to spend our last years with this? Just ignore politics and go do something else. Yeah. Now, how do you, you know, I, I kind of feel mad that, uh, uh, that I can't go and travel at this point because. Oh, hey, how, Alex, let it go. I let know, go. I know. But how much time do I have left? I mean, too maybe, bad. You know, nobody, it's nobody's fault. It happened. I know. I know, and I think, and I don't know if you agree with me, but I think this is the worst thing that's happened in our lifetime. Well, I, you know, I don't want to rank everything. It's so, I, I think that the pandemic, together with the econ, economic, terrible thing that it's caused, um, Black Lives Matter, which is a dynamic new thing, we don't know where it's going. Trump himself, um, and there are two or three other things, but this is the most difficult hard, awful time of my lifetime. Yeah. And fascinating, and fascinating. I think we old people, maybe you notwithstanding, um, are easier about lockdown, and we need much stronger, much tighter lockdowns if we're ever going to beat this and stop getting so many deaths every day. People have to stay home, period. And you never leave without a mask. You never get anywhere near another person. And until we do that, until 95% of the people do that, the pandemic is not going to go away. Well, I made the point last night that the greatest co-enabler of the pandemic. The, the greatest what? Enabler of uh -huh. the pandemic is capitalism. That we don't know uh -huh. how to say we're going to forego our economy for a time. So we solve this problem because we could we could we can we could solve this problem tomorrow if we all shut down, just shut down. And then probably in a month, we might be able to start opening up again. Do you know that here in New York? Last three days, New York City, not a single death from covid. Mm -hmm. We learned how to do it. And by the way, the press isn't even reporting it. You know, and, and to me, that's a big story, because while the uh, rest of the country, I hear, oh, four, five, 400 died in this town, this state, or 300 died in that state, and I go, three days in a row, no deaths in New York City. That's amazing. It can be done. and mm -hmm. it, But it means that you're going to have to say, hey, human lives are worth more than the money. Well, what it also means and what no governors are willing to do is to say that if you go out without a mask, if you walk into a store, and many to have this, that have a sign that say no entry without a mask, mm -hmm. there's a penalty when you don't follow those. There has to be a penalty. Or there's, because there are these huge groups of people we read about in the news every day that not only aren't wearing a mask and screaming about not believing in them, they're spitting on people, coughing on people. Yeah. There has to be a penalty for that. I mean, I don't understand if you're coughing on purpose on somebody, what is the difference between that and sticking a needle with some lethal thing in their arm? I, I don't see the difference. Well, you know, um, uh, who, who knows how we're going to solve this, but it's the selfishness of the American public that is literally fueled this well, it's not American. Pandemic. It's happening in other countries too. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking about us. I'm just dealing with us, and mm -hmm. and and uh, we're just too selfish to be able to 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 suck it in and say, okay, this is what we got to do. I got to stay indoors. I got to wear a mask. You know, and what's so terrible about a restaurant saying you got to wear a mask? The fact is, they have signs that say no shoes, no service. You know. So I think a mask is a much more important uh, consideration than no shoes. Do hey. you really have signs that say no shoes, no service? Yeah. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, that's like a beach, a beach places. Hey, listen, we, we've run out of time. Okay, all, all Trump all the time. All Trump all the time. How you doing physically? I'm doing okay. You're doing okay. And you, people can read you at timegoesby.net. 
Find out what it's like to get older. Either that or just look at the two of us. <laughs> true, true. Thank, thank you, Ronnie. This is my COVID haircut. I haven't had a haircut oh, in two weeks. Well, years. I have, actually. I got a clippers <laughs> and, and took care of it. Anyway, thanks, Ronnie. See you in a couple thank of you, weeks. Thank you, Don. Bye.